some of the most critically important semiconductor chips. They're essential for most modern tech, phones, cars, computers, medical equipment, you name it. And now the Biden administration is making a big bet to try and beat out China to be the global leader in producing these chips. Jeremy Diamond has more on this from the White House for us. Jeremy, you spoke with the Commerce Secretary about this chips initiative. What did she tell you? Well, okay, one of the things that the Commerce Secretary wanted to be crystal clear about is that this is a national security initiative. It is about outcompeting China in chips production and also ensuring that the U.S. isn't reliant on other foreign producers for these uh, advanced uh, chips, which are essential uh, for a whole range of issues in terms of commercial applications, but also key military technologies as well. But one of the things that uh, Secretary Raimondo told us was also that in order to meet those national security goals, uh, that the United States needs to invest and make sure that there is a workforce that can meet the moment. And that's why, as today, the U.S. opens up nearly $40 billion of funding and subsidies uh, for uh, chips manufacturers here in the United States, they're also making sure that these companies that are applying for these funds, that they have to lay out how they're going to meet some of these workforce development goals in terms of planning to work with educational institutions and to provide the kinds of training to ensure that there is that kind of highly skilled workforce able to produce uh, these chips. Also looking to ensure that there is diversity in terms of both the chips manufacturing, but also the construction of these uh, chips manufacturing plants, which is going to require something from 120 to 140,000 construction workers to build all of these plants, uh, according to the Commerce Secretary. They're also trying to meet some key domestic policy initiatives with this chips plan as well. And that is that any applicant that's applying for more than $150 million in funding uh, from this CHIPS program is also going to have to ensure that they lay out how they intend to provide some kind of access to child care, whether on-site or child care subsidies for their workforce. All of this is with the goal of diversifying that workforce and ensuring that these are attractive jobs so that the U.S. can have enough people in these positions to meet those national security goals. But again, that is the big picture, is the national security implications of this are so key, and that's what Secretary Raimondo uh, really wanted to stress to us. Kate? So interesting. Thanks so much, Jeremy. I appreciate it. So as we speak, this focus on competition with China, tension with China really, is a big focus on Capitol Hill as well. Multiple committees focusing in on this really China situation as we speak, kind of culminating tonight in a first big hearing this evening by the new Select Committee on Strategic Competition between the U.S. and China. And our next guest, Democratic Congresswoman Haley Stevens, she sits on this committee. Congresswoman, thank you for coming in. Let's talk about first the CHIPS Act as Jeremy Diamond was laying out this push and this push from the administration around this. There is a lot to like. It got bipartisan support on Capitol Hill and beyond. And on paper, it sounds really good. The U.S. outcompeting China in a key industry. But why are you convinced it's going to work? Well, the reminder of this, Kate, is that we innovated microchips in the United States of America. And at one point, we were making nearly 40% of them here. And now it is decades later, down to 13%. The tide rolled out. I'm from Michigan. Our automotive base has really suffered the ramifications of a chip shortage. I'm enthusiastic and delighted to have been a lead author on the Chips and Science Bill. Also, what we did to bolster scientific research funding in this country and my legislation to invest in the workforce component of chips. But now we need to be looking at phase two, right? We don't want to wait for the next crisis. We're doing industrial policy for the 21st century leading by manufacturing and making in the United States of America. It sounds good to say, but we need to come up with the strategies in order to do it. And, and you, you, I'm sure you agree with the Commerce Secretary, as, as Jeremy was laying out, that she has made clear she views this as a national security issue. Given the environment of heightened tension between the U.S. and China right now, are you concerned that this push will inflame things even more rather than bring the temperature down? Well, look, we are a manufacturing destination and no one should be afraid of competition and no one country owns any market, so, so to speak. But the national security reality is that we don't want to be overly reliant on any country for critical supply chain goods, materials, parts, components. That's what's happened here with chips. It was a wake up call. The questions that I'm bringing to this committee as a manufacturing policy expert from the Midwest is what do we need to get in front of for the next round of technology, the next round of R&D? 
artificial intelligence, quantum computing, technologies that we see going into our automobiles. This is an exciting moment for us, but it's also definitely part of a wake up call. 90% of the graphite, I just in a science committee hearing, and we just heard from the Council on Competitiveness, 90% of the graphite that we are relying on for batteries and for anything that, that is supplied by graphite is coming from China. We're also in a raw materials and a rare earth minerals race. I've been talking about this since we the days we were doing the auto rescue, Kate. Now here we are about to hit the quarter 21st century mark for this nation, and we've got to think about industrial policy in a new way. Yeah, being proactive rather than reactive, which I think you can exactly. agree. Congress has a very hard time doing sometimes. Um, but let me let me ask you about this, this tension that I was just talking about when it comes to U.S. and China. It now also includes the very Factor real possibility. these arms uh, equipment. Uh, and I think that would be a very wise first sanction to be uh, looking at. Congressman, do you agree? Well, my opinion of this is that the CCP seems to be all over the place as it pertains to Russia. Uh, certainly, they're calling for a, an end to the war, but not by any means in which we are calling an end to the war. And you saw the president uh, speak to that recently and saying that it didn't really make a lot of sense. Now we're looking at them potentially sending arms to Russia, which would be quite mind blowing and, 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 and disappointing. And the steps that I think that we need to take in response are gonna to have to be serious. They're going to have to be aggressive and they're not going to be singular. We're going to have to act alongside our Western allies and our and our allies to the to the south of us. Certainly what is taking place uh, in, in Ukraine with Russia's illegal war one year on is not acceptable. It has never been acceptable and democracy must prevail. We cannot uh, uh, condone lawless autocracies going forward in the way Russia has. And if China does plan to sell arms, that certainly asks a lot of questions and begets action. You have this first hearing tonight of the House Select Committee on China, and the chair and ranking member of the committee appeared together for interviews this weekend to make the point that your work as a committee, it is going to be bipartisan. Um, there are very few examples in recent memory, <clears throat> really, of committees on the Hill that really do that are bipartisan to start, and even if they start out that way, with the goal that they end up that way. Why do you think your committee can pull this off? Well, I remain optimistic. I, I think some of the existential challenges with regard to the competition with the CCP beget collaboration. You certainly see members of this committee, Mr. Gallagher, as the, the chairman of the full committee with an expert background. He's a Marine PhD, foreign policy background. Many of us are coming in on the economic side. And, and certainly listening to our stakeholders, right? I was in district last week and I convened Michigan manufacturers in Oakland County, Michigan to hear directly from them about what our automotive sector needs, what this competition means to them. The economic drivers of this on the workforce front, on the production front are very real. That's something I wanna to bring to this committee. And I'm certainly expecting my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to listen. Very interesting. We'll, we'll definitely be watching this evening. Congresswoman, thank you for your time. 